Stop! That's it. You're coming with me. Put me down. Hold still. Put me down. Gentleman pirate from Internet Historian. Y'all ready for this? Skip intro. 30 seconds. Oh, they didn't say that he just skip the intro. Blackbeard. This can't be it. Where's that damn letter? There has to be another way. Prisoner. Is it time? Mm-hmm. Have Have you got any mail? Not today, Mr. Bonnet. Are, are you sure? Quite sure. Come on now. You know, there really should be a letter from the governor arriving soon. Move it. Get away from the prisoner. Wait! Get back. Stop! <laughs> oh no! No. <laughs> Goodbye, pirate. <laughs> Don't do it. On behalf of the Crown, for the high crime of piracy, we sentence you, Steed Bonnet, to death by hanging of the neck. <laughs> May God have mercy on your soul. No way! Thirty years prior, on the island of Barbados, the year is 1688. Meet baby Steed Bonnet, oh, son of look wealthy at him. sugar plantation owners, Mr. and Mrs. Bonnet. Young Steed has a brilliant life, playing with Legos and shit. But then, in 1694, at age six, Steed's father died. And young Steed inherited the estate and all of the responsibilities that came with it. Wow. His mother would make sure that he was brought up educated and given all of the advantages that minor nobility could offer. He was even handed the role of major in the military. And otherwise, Steve's path in life was relatively straightforward and set out for him. But? Until in 1709, when he would marry Mary Allenby. Together they would have four children, three sons, named Allenby, Edward, Steed. and Steed, and one daughter, Mary. Mary, could you pass the syrup? You can have syrup when you fix up this house! I was talking to our daughter. Whatever, Steed! Oh, uh, yes, Mum? Not you, your father! I'm the man of the house! Ladies first! No, yeah. don't give it here! Ow. Ow. Ah. <laughs> You need to get yourself together, Steed! Look at this place, it's in tatters! Well, fine, yes, okay, I'll take care of it. Hey, I just realized a thing down here. This was in South Carolina. It is not known whether they fought especially about syrup, but there was constant bickering between the two, and it was talked about throughout the town. <laughs> the syrup may not be real, but they did argue a lot. Another loan? Ah. Yes, 200, please. Oh, I can give you 100. What? We can't keep doing this, Bonnet. You're $1,700 in debt. You're a lost cause. But I have a family and a sick chair boy. Chair boy? I missed boy? the part where that's my problem. I've got a boy as well, you know. He's a little shit. Ah, well, I'll, I'll take the 100 then. Bonnet solemnly returned back home, money in hand. So, 100 pounds ought to do it. Where's that syrup? That won't even be enough to pay the workers this season! I know! It's not good enough! The farmstead needs repair! A gust of wind and it could fall over at any moment! The farmstead is fine! Look at it! Oh. Well, at least it can't get any worse. But two weeks later, it did get much worse. In fact, a hurricane came along and destroyed oh, pretty much everything. Not really, but... Ow. 
more and more stress was being piled onto Steed's shoulders. So he had to go rob, right? I would like to believe this in my brain. People don't go out to rob for fun. They rob to survive. That's what I think. Desperate times cause for desperate measures. I don't suggest people go out and do it. Honestly, try to find a way to work around it. I may not agree with it, but I understand it, if that makes sense. How come oh, you're dressed see. like a pirate? I, cause I be a pirate. And you need a loan? I... Not all bells and whistles, is it? To be sure. Cool. He's about to rob the plane. Steve, let's get this over with. Okie dokie. Well, well. Yes, I know, I know, but look, I'm in deep shit here. Please, I'll be happy with anything you can give me. Hmm. Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wow. Here you go. Dumb. Don't spend Not it all at once. Really? That's about what you're worth, Bonnet. Now get out of here. Ah, how can I help you today, sir? I'm about to rob it. Money or your life? What am I supposed to do now? Become a what pirate! What kind of life is this? Just going deeper and deeper into debt. Oh, ow. Oh, oh, huh? oh no. Hey, someone stop that guy. Uh, ar, ar, matey. Hi, cheers, matey. <laughs> Why did you let him get away? I missed the part where that was my problem. Mm. Wow, what a guy. I wish that were me. If that's what you went to. Sometime later. What is this? Titanic? Where am I? On a ship? Can anyone hear me? Mama? Mama? Papa? I don't understand. Are you dreaming? This feeling, so strange, like a bird. Cock, cock, Captain Bonnet. What did Are you, you dreaming? The greatest pirate who ever lived, Captain Bonnet. 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 <laughs> Are you getting up? Dad, help! The wedge has come loose! The wedge! In 1715, <laughs> Steed's oh, son, Allenby, died. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't know it was legit. Some records say it was his Steed daughter, not had his finally son. reached his limit. Hmm, no more. Okay. Today is the day. Me. Listen, kids, Allenby was like a son to me, and anyway, it's time for me to go. So, wait, and just you, like that, he really Steve did just pull a going out for a pack of smokes. I just would never understand the leaving the kids behind thing. I, I just can't. You can't. You can't convince me. You can't convince me why you left your own children behind. You couldn't deal with it, but you left your children to deal with it. Like I don't know. Ah, eh, whatever. To become a pirate. The world better be ready for Captain... Captain Bonnet. Captain Bonnet, he's a hero. Hmm, that could work. What are you doing, making a ship? You legit build it's a beautiful. ship. It's beautiful. Hey, this Are you looking to have a ship built? Uh, yes please. Well, we can do that for you. Ah, uh, perfect. Then my pirating adventures can finally begin. Pirating? You know, you know most pirates just steal their ships. When I'm not like the other pirates. <laughs> well, clearly. I also hold rank in the military. All right, come with me. So, Steed rounded up any trinkets or heirlooms he could get from home 
and what little left of his inheritance, and commissions to have a ship built. A sloop outfitted with ten cannons, enough room for two score men, and even a library. I got one thing that's going through my mind. He put all this effort into building a ship, selling his heirlooms to become a pirate. Why couldn't you do that? Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Leave the children. The man left his children. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, I am a little bugged out by it. Need something intimidating sounding. Something really scary. The Backstreet Boys? Oh my god. Revenge. I'm almost ready. All I need now is a crew. He waltzed into the roughest, toughest bar in town. I'd like to hire 70 of your roughest, toughest men, please. And uh, <laughs> oh one quartermaster, too, please. I'll be your quartermaster, sir. No, I'll be your quartermaster. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thank you, Captain. Oh, and you can be the boatswain. Steve would lean heavily on the quartermaster because he had no idea what the hell he was doing. So anyway, Steve and his crew went to the Revenge to begin their journey of pipes. Oh, okay. It's spring 1717 and everything was ready. Steve was prepared to do his first pirating ever and start his life anew. He paused. Am I, am I making the right decision? Are you? Oh, uh-oh. Yeah, you are, I guess. Let's go, men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, now the I great Steed so. Bonnet sets sail on his first journey to be the greatest pirate alive. Nay, the greatest pirate to ever have been alive. It is my destiny. What's our first move, Captain? Ah, yeah. okay. So, Quartermaster, what do we even do? Well, sir, there's a colony near Chesapeake Bay that has some fairly expensive ships roaming around. Right, let's go there. So, go around stealing, right? So they set sail for the east coast of the New World. So, Quartermaster, must be getting close now. Sir, we've been sailing for less than an hour. So, like... Another 15 minutes or so? Months? Actually, it will take a few weeks, Captain. Weeks? Oh. oh. <laughs> well, what the hell do you guys do to pass the time? Oh, there's plenty to do. Drink? Sing shanties, tie knots, get scurvy. <laughs> uh, I guess I could read some more. Feel free to borrow any books you want, lads. Just don't get them wet. Ah, uh, Captain, most pirates can't read. Seriously, you guys can't read? Teach them! Teach well, them! I guess I could read to you if you want. Yeah, you got yeah. time. Ooh, ooh. Awesome. Great. No. Uh, no! Well, well, gather around, lads. This one's a doozy. Chapter 1. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and popped out of the egg. Chapter 108. The very hungry caterpillar is on trial for his war cry. Yes, ship the heart. His Captain, war cry? What do we do? Uh oh. It's a merchant vessel. Your orders, Captain. Uh, um, uh, uh, quick! We need to forward mark on the port with the riggings um, and the cannons. So, do a 360 ollie around their back, and the, the back of the boat. Not their backs. The boat, the back of the boat. Arr. Uh, Captain, you'd better get changed quickly into your combat uniform. We're gonna need your bravery to lead the charge. Yes, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, men, bring the ship around the starboard side. We're opening fire on Mark. Okay. <coughs> Prepare the board. Oh, he's just taking charge right now? Three paper only, the remaining all chain shot. We give warning, but get ready for a chase. That is indeed fascinating how they did that with these big ass boats. Sir, impeccable timing. We're waiting on your count. Uh. Count down from three and say fire. Oh. Uh, three, two, two, fire. Oh. Three, two, two, fire. Jesus. Three, two, 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 fire. Ship. Ended quickly. Surrender. Over the next few months, they sailed all around Delaware. Sometimes having a little success and sometimes falling on their face. Hmm. They had captured and plundered four ships near Virginia, and two more near New York. 
When another fled to Barbados to spread the word of their piracy, they chased it down and burnt it to ashes. Now, a quick lesson on pirating. Okay. What happens on a typical pirate ship is that you plunder someone else's vessel and split the booty among the crew. However, okay. Steed would do things differently. Dibs. No split. Instead, his crew would receive wages. Successful plunder or not. Too good to be true, eh, lads? Wow. That way, they could rely on a regular income. Arr. Not a bad idea. Arr. In principle. Arr. Passing through the Carolinas, they took two more ships, using one of them to repair the Revenge herself. Despite his inexperience, Steed was already gaining a name for himself. Being a literate man, a man of status turned criminal, and known for never harming the crews of the boats he plundered, eventually he earned himself the title of the Gentleman Pirate. Let's step things up a notch, lads. Set sail for the Bahamas Nassau. We're going to... The Pirate City. Arr. Captain, Mano wore off the starboard side. It's heading right Hello for war. us. Oh, mateys, that's our next victim. A warship, Captain? Uh -huh. A bit dangerous, don't you think, Captain? No, Quartermaster. It be tiny, she'll be fine. Sir, you may find that it gets larger as we approach. <laughs> the great pirate steed fears no fleet, nor a puny vessel that dareth approach me. Man ye stations, quartermaster. Get a coffee there? Very well, Captain. Oh my. That is a big boy. <laughs> Bonnet and his crew attack the enormous warship. This is generally regarded as a bad move. Oh, 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 oh god! Oh. The revenge was absolutely dominated, with a full half of Steed's half of crew, crew. Oh, either wow. injured or dead by the end of the fight. Bonnet himself was also badly wounded. Retreat! But the Revenge manages to scramble away and head for the pirate city of Nassau. Oh. Pulling into Nassau, Bonnet replenishes his crew, repairs his ship, and picks up some more supplies. Limping up the docks, Bonnet happened to bump into a couple of pirates you may have heard of. Benjamin Hornigold and Edward Teach. Although you may know Edward by his other name. Blackbeard? Arr. That's quite a limp you got there, Captain. Ah, uh, what can us pirates <laughs> say? Tis but an injury of war. I was dodging cannonballs and stubbed me toe on the dresser. Arr, oh. I see. But, uh, uh I, um, I took out like 80 guys with um, just one pistol. Yeah, you, sh you should have seen it. Arr, sounds like quite the battle. Yes, although I need to put up for a while, recover from my injuries, restock, regroup, you know. The evening carried on and the drinks flowed. Can I, uh, yeah, I got something to tell you. I'm, I'm in a lot of pain over here. Uh, and I, I think I'm a little in over my head, but I can't let the men see me weak. They rely on me for their booty. Arr, the seas <laughs> take a toll on a man. As does everything. You no, know, when I had a ship, I had a similar problem. R really? I. You know how I fixed it? I had a temporary shadow captain. Oh, it was the best. He took care of everything and even taught me a thing or two while I could oh. sit back and read a book. Yeah, interesting. Arr, Illiterate? And everyone thought I was still leading everything and we made tons of cash. And when I was better, he simply handed back the keys. Ah, it was wonderful. I think I might do it again soon. Mm, but I'm sure it's not your thing. No, wait. Uh, that sounds perfect. Where, where, where can I find someone like that? Arr, that'd be tough. Hmm. You need someone strong and experienced. Like someone you? Someone who inspires confidence with a black beard, preferably. Blackbeard, I have an incredible idea. Oh, go on. Would you be my temporary shadow captain? Wow, I am shocked. This truly came out of nowhere. I'll have to give it some thought. Oh, oh please, you simply must. All right, fine, you twisted me arm. Excellent, I'll make the preparations. I've already started loading my stuff on board. <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. Gather round, gather round. I'd like you all to meet our new vice president of nautical coordination, the infamous Blackbeard. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, Captain? Uh, Captain, 
Are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> of course it is. And I'm tired of you second guessing the captain. Uh, thank you, pal. Oh boy. We'll be unstoppable. Very well, sir. How embarrassing. Right in front of our new guest, too. You're not gonna let him off the hook, are you, Captain? Excuse you? Ah, uh, no. In fact, you know what, Quartermaster? I've had enough of the back chat. And demoting you to one eighth master. Ignatius Pell will be my new Quartermaster. Aye, aye. Uh oh. As you wish, sir. Let us set sail and make our way to the place where all the greatest treasures are kept. Well, first Delaware and now a new adventure. The most exciting place in the whole world. Delaware again! Yay! So they set off again to Delaware. But this time, Blackbeard could see firsthand what Bonnet was really like as a captain. Time to help out my crew. Bitchin'. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Whoops! You don't want to trip. I'll hang that up for you. Ah, that'll get it nice and clean. Who's got the tidy whities? <laughs> Just kidding, them. Yeah, they're mine. Boom. Gotcha. Wee! Wee! Ah, uh, strike! <laughs> I am man girl. Icarus can eat my ass. Captain Bonnet! Yes, Blackbeard? Could ye join me for a moment? What's up, BB? You're looking a bit pale, Captain. Maybe you should rest up for a little while longer. Uh, I, I feel pretty good, actually. Captain, I insist. Don't push him overboard, right? Okay, I thought he was going to push him overboard. Exciting, exciting stuff out there. Oh, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, top secret, I'm afraid. Can't tell you. But, uh, so much treasure is going to be happening. Soon. Congratulations, sir. Yes. If I may, can I just tell you a brief anecdote? Uh, go on. Well, the last ship I worked on was called the Quintessential. It was a beautiful vessel, and it was helmed by a wonderful captain. But he constantly had bad luck. Eventually, the captain brought on board a deputy, or shadow captain, if you will. Where is this going? <clears throat> well, sir, the deputy was very effective. He was experienced and cunning, and soon they had a lot of success. 150 barrels of nutmeg, silver from China. It was a time of plenty, and everyone was happy about it. Mm -hmm. So happy, sir, and all the crew wanted it to continue indefinitely. They attributed their success to the new deputy. And, of course, it ended with the deputy becoming the captain. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Aye, sir. So after they cut off the head of the old captain and threw it into the ocean, and then abandoned the rest of us on Nassau... Wait, what? <laughs> Don't listen to him, Captain. Blackbeard would never try to take your crew or your ship. The Eighth Master is just trying to undermine your better judgment. <laughs> no, not at all. Blackbeard already has a crew. A small crew? Well, as Quartermaster, I side with the captain. Enough! My men love me. I love them. Like a father loves his cheer. See you later, kids. Yeah, you better stop well, that sentence. Mm, bad example. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. I trust Blackbeard. And that's enough squabbling between you two. Huh. Yes, sir. Look how calm he is. Because he knows what's about to go down. Arr, how's the toe this morning? Good. Still a, still a long road ahead, though. I glad to hear it. Captains. Captain, j just one. Yes. Anyway, mm. vessel ahead. Captains. Men at the ready. You are. You are. You are. What followed next was a series of successful raids and takeovers. Better here to make the story Blackbeard flow a little would better. intimidate the crews and was a lot less polite than Steed about taking what he wanted. He was known for putting the fear of death and torture into his targets. Although records show he never actually killed anyone. Attack! Oh, I guess that's nice, right? You are. You are. Attack! You are. you are. A string of successful heists. 
Oh my god, Blackbeard is so hot right now. Attack. You are. You are. Attack. You are. You are. It wasn't long before they were one of the most feared and successful crews on all the seas. Blackbeard had made them rich, made them confident. <laughs> it was everything Steed had wanted to achieve. To the captain, you are. You are. Thank you, thank you, you're too kind, really. Oh yeah. Woo! Are you still on the king? Lads. Let's get those cheers going. Woo! Woo! All right. Almost there. Woo! Woo. Uh, excuse me, friendo. Sunday though, right, pal? <coughs> anyway, big thanks. With Blackbeard at the helm, the men went on to plunder 11 ships near Delaware Bay. Their bad luck had turned around. Black Blackbeard. Blackbeard. But Steed could feel that with each passing day, he had less and less control over the situation. Oh, you just now feeling that? Dad, sir, want me to read tonight? Still got a few chapters left. Feeling pretty tired tonight, Captain. Another time, maybe. Oh, okay. No problem. What else can you do? Still recovering from his injury, he would hobble around the deck. Bonnet and Blackbeard sailed back to the Caribbean, where they made one last booty plunder together. It was a 200 ton ship named the Concord. And not only did they take the cargo, but they took the vessel as well. And Blackbeard went, This one's much nicer. This'll be my main ship now. Alright. Blackbeard sailed on to the Grenadines, where he renamed his ship the Queen Anne's Revenge. And then Blackbeard and Bonnet simply parted ways. He actually gave back the ship. How's the toe? Oh, okay. much better. Ready to go again. Here you go. Here's your ship and your crew back. Thanks. Arr, no worries. And everything went back to normal. Okay. Bonnet sailed onto the West Caribbean with his crew, and Blackbeard went to Nassau. See, eighth master, everything went great. I have my ship and my crew back. Told you. I'm pleased for you, Captain. And for us as well. Right. Now let's do one more job, but this time without the training wheels on. Hey, lads? Aye. Let my great pirate legacy continue. Arr. Yeah, I don't know about that. But the Eighth Master could read the men better than Steed could. He knew that they were fickle. They now had a measuring stick for what successful pirating looked like, and if Steed couldn't live up to the kind of leadership that Blackbeard could offer, they would very quickly reassess their options. Yep. <coughs> ah, it's March 1718. I'll do the exposition for a bit. Okay. We sailed around Honduras for the last couple of months, not doing a whole lot really, but getting ready and burning through supplies. And now we're about to plunder our first vessel since Blackbeard left, and we're just so excited. It's going to go very well. But it didn't go very well at all. They targeted a 400 ton merchant ship, the Protestant Caesar, and it proved to be far too slippery for them. After a brief fight, it escaped, and all that Steed was able to acquire were a few injuries for his crew. Oh. His men had had enough. Um, just gonna, uh, um, Take a nap. pop to the little boy's room. Back in a bit, fellas. Help. This isn't good. They're going to revolt. We should return to port immediately. Um, well, uh, okay, 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 no, um, uh, uh, uh. <coughs> Sir? <laughs> oh. I've had a word with the men, sir. There seems to be a general consensus of discontent. No shit! Are they going to do a mutiny? Sir, I think the situation is nearly that dire, but if you do plan to return to shore, I would caution against it. Yeah, you would. Sir, if you dock, the crew will abandon you entirely. It's hardly a better situation than a mutiny. And once docked, you'll be defenseless to stop anyone from seizing the revenge. So what do I do? <sighs> Calm reassurance and a small victory, sir. Double down. Gamble on one more plunder. Ha, yeah, Captain. He's saying that because he knows if they mutiny, the men would put him in charge. That's not the reason. Although that's not the worst outcome either. Yes, yeah, The not. men trust me. I can ensure that you're unharmed and we can take you back to the port from there. 
It would be no worse than the predicament uh, we are already you in. You made me your quartermaster for a reason and demoted this guy for undermining you at every step. Either we go to port or I'm done. Oh boy. Sir, there is only one option here to maintain your ship and crew. Let's go back to Nassau. Very well, sir. I will ready the men for port. <coughs> So they returned to Nassau, where Blackbeard was also stationed. The moment they hit the dock, just as the Eighth Master predicted, the men abandoned Steed. Easy lads, that's okay. Hey now, whoa. And seeing Blackbeard was in town, they yep. headed straight for him. There you go. Blackbeard, Blackbeard, take us back. We need you, Blackbeard. 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 Let's talk. Uh, that's about what happened. Anyway, do you think you can help convince them to stay with me and not mutiny? Drinks, gentlemen. Oh, yes, please. Can I have no a glass drinks. of... drinks. Listen here, Bonnet. You are the most incompetent pirate I have ever seen in my entire life. Uh... You think I like being a pirate? We weren't all born with rich parents who could send us to school to learn to read and write. Oh, I can read Shut you. up. For me, it was this or unloading cargo in Bristol like my father before me. Until me back gives in and I'm lying in the gutter. But I... Shut up. <laughs> this isn't a game. And I haven't got any time for some boy who wants to play pirate. Oh. I'm putting my second in command, Richards, in charge of the revenge. Your crew is mine. Consider yourself a hostage. I'll see to it that you're not harmed. But one step out of line, I could leave you here with nothing. Stranded. No ship. No crew. How long do you think you'll last with your face plastered on wanted posters all over the Caribbean? You're lucky I'm giving you the option. Whoa. So which is it? Aye, aye, Captain. Waitress! Yes, sir. Rum. A drink? Of course, rum. sir. Where's the rum? Captain Morgan! Drink! It is time to go now. All Someone out wanting to play pirate. And so, Steed was effectively a hostage on his own ship. Well, damn. Well, uh, uh, I'm all done, mateys. Are you? I think you missed a spot. Where? No. Right there. Richards. 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 Oh, and from now on, we're going to be doing things the right way, yar. <laughs> oh, don't let him see you cry, man. Aristide? Oh, uh, Captain, can I, can I help you? As a matter of fact, you can, Bonnet. You're needed at the home. Really? Oh, it hasn't been mopped yet. Oh, man. Uh oh. <laughs> what have I done? What do I do? Maybe I. Hmm. Where am I? Steedy. Huh? Who, who's there? Look, Look up, up Steedy. It's, it's your, your dead, dead father, father Steedy. Papa? Yes, yes Steedy. Listen, Listen, my son. son. Don't, Don't give, give up, up Steedy. Believe, Believe in yourself. But Papa, what do I do? Go home to your children? Believe in yourself, yourself Steedy. Give me guidance, Papa. I must, I must go, go now. now. Remember, Remember to never, never stop, stop not, not giving but, up, but son. But you just got here. I'm, I'm, I'm going, going through a tunnel. tunnel. I've got to go. Papa! <laughs> Steedy. Did that help him any? May, 
1718. Vessel up head captain. Looks like we've got ourselves a new ship. Grab the captain and take the vessel. Oh shit, in it. Ouchie, oh, that hurts. From now on, <laughs> you captain your ship under my flag, or you walk the plank. Understood? How close is land, in it? Not close. All right, I'll join you. Welcome to the fleet. <laughs> you see the overboard or get your ass on this boat. First time having your ship taken over? No. Then I'm in good company. Steed Bonnet. Avid Ariat. In it. Nice to meet you, Harriet. Is he saying in Blackbeard it? Blackbeard continued pirating around the Caribbean, but his recent successes had come at a high cost, and many of his men were badly injured. They needed medicine, and they were wanted by authorities, pretty much everywhere. With few options left, Blackbeard made a very bold move. He sailed into Charleston, Charleston. dropped anchor, and blockaded the entire port. Oh my god, it's Blackbeard! Grr, I hate pirates! Back in South Carolina? Blackbeard attacked any merchant ships attempting to flee, and he took some of them hostage as well for bargaining. This is widely considered one of the boldest moves any pirate has ever made. I don't know too much about Blackbeard's story, but this whole pirates, let me be honest here, not a fan of it, but I am intrigued. I think it's maybe the style and the boats and just everything's so old fashioned, I don't know, but I get it. There's either you on the rich side or you the poor side, what you gonna do with yourself? Now the governor of Charleston, Robert Johnson, was feeling the pressure of the pirates on his doorstep. I have your medicine. Yay, medicine. Yay. Well, well, the gentleman pirate is here as well. Oh, um, hi. <laughs> Look, men, his eyes are red. He looks like he's been crying. <laughs> Let us all laugh. Nuh-uh. A captain working under Blackbeard, huh? Doesn't seem voluntary to me, Lance. Ha ha ha. We shall laugh twice. Ha 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 ha. All right, Captain. Playtime's over. Let the grown ups talk. Steed, that's enough. Go inside. Yeah, go inside, Bonnet. I hate being a pirate. Not fair. I hate being and a pirate. It's an over. Very well. And what about the hostages? Dangerous game you're playing, BB. My men will be seeing you soon. True to his word, with the medicine, Blackbeard freed the hostages and broke the blockade. Over in man England, of his word, though, King George seems has like. decided to take action. Right, this is dumb, but Blackbeard isn't. We're not going to catch him. I think it's time we negotiated with this guy. He passed. The Act of Grace, which granted clemency to pirates who renounced their piratey ways, and even offered them work as pirateers on behalf of the Crown to pirate against the Spanish. News of the Act spread quickly, but it was hard for pirates to know if it was actually true. What if it was all a ruse? What would stop prosecutors from simply reneging on the deal? Mm. June 1718. Blackbeard's fleet sailed for Topsail Island to rest and refit their vessels. When they arrive at shore, Bonnet and Blackbeard were informed about the royal pardon. An act of grace? Wow, whoa, wee wow, nice! Richards, a moment. Oh my god, Blackbeard and Richards are so hot right now. So, Bonnet? Yes? We've got a fair amount of stuff, and I'm ready to retire. We're gonna take the deal. What about you? Uh, count me in. Sounds, sounds great. Hey, um, Bonnet. Yes, Captain? You know how, like, we're really good buddies. We've been through a lot. No. I've never <laughs> been the, uh, um, scurvy, I think. <laughs> Arr, me too. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. So, I was thinking, would you be able to go and accept our pardons on our behalf? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I can no. do that. 
So he was given his own small sailing vessel and set out to acquire a couple of get out of jail free cards. Bath, North Carolina. God, I hope this is real. And it was real. Oh, Bonnet okay. received a full pardon from Governor Charles Eden and requested a clearance to take the revenge to the Denmark Caribbean colony of St. Thomas, where he planned to begin privateering against the Spanish Navy. Dios mío, no! He also collected Blackbeard's pardon. Things were turning around. He had become a somewhat successful pirate, and he had just been given a job. Brilliant. So, Bonnet returned eagerly to Topsail Island Sounds to good. the revenge. However, upon finding his vessel, he realized that he had been wow. betrayed. Blackbeard had stripped the revenge of all of its valuables. Bonnet's crew had been left marooned on a sandbar nearby. Well, this sucks. So are we going to starve to death here? We'll probably die of thirst or exposure before that. Well, that's what we get for trusting Blackbeard. Amen. We need to put our trust in Steed once again. He will be the one who comes back for us. I know he will. I couldn't catch any fish. Oh my god. What do we do? Calm down, Harriet. You calm down, mutton chops, innit? Barnacle boy. Barnacle boy. Enough. So hungry, so weak, head spinning. Oh my. He did. He did? Oh, what are we gonna do? We wait. We wait and we pray that Steed will get to us in time. It's kind of, it's kind of gay, but hey. What is that? Captain, Captain, Captain. Hang on. Before you all make peace, let's get something straight. Sure, maybe Steve isn't the bravest. Maybe he's not the brightest either, or very tough, and he's kind of skittish sometimes. But he has the heart of a captain. He could have left us on that sandbar to die, yeah, he and could yet have. here we are. What were we before, Steed? Gamblers? Drunks? Second-rate pirates without a vessel? Without leadership? Bonnet. We Bonnet. owe our lives to this man. Now let's hear it. Captain Bonnet. We Captain will follow you Bonnet. Beyond. Captain. Captain Bonnet. No. Don't cheer for me yet, man. Woo woo. Oh. You oh. can do that later. But for now, no more Mr. Nice Pirate. Blackbeard robbed me of my dignity. He robbed me of my ship. And now I don't even have the means to become a privateer. Bonnet was done being walked over. Oh, he set out to go. hunt down Blackbeard. Quartermaster, it's time to get serious. Revenge. I admit it, I've been a shit captain until now, but I've hit rock bottom. I'll do anything to make this work. Teach me. We'll make a captain out of you yet, sir. All right. Ready, set, montage. Turn it around. Did it, did it get better? Did he get his revenge on Blackbeard? So many questions, I don't know. I don't know too much about this stuff. He got it! it all works out. Wait, he was about to get hanged. Did he get hanged? Oh my gosh, so many questions. Hunting Blackbeard. Uh, Captain. Uh, hang on a minute, Ape Master. Let's take inventory. Oh. Sir, so all of our possessions were stripped, remember? Oh, right. 
Emergency meeting. Uh, what's the plan, man? We need to do just a couple more plundering jobs as pirates. But if I do that, I'll nullify my pardon? Hmm. What if we adopt an alias name for the ship and continue pirating in secret? We can gather enough resources then to hunt down Blackbeard. Why are you still here? Harry, it's a buddy of mine. Yes, That's he a good idea. Still. He's a no-nonsense guy with the heart of a captain, and he has a great sense of humour. Anyway, how's it going, buddy? Pretty good, but I'll be having seaweed dreams for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, serious faces, boys. What are we doing now? You put on a disguise and change your name, and then we change the ship's name. That way we can go pirating again, like we're someone else. In it. Um, sounds risky. Look, Steed, we don't yeah, have any options here. And what would happen to us if we got caught pirating again? Well, there's a 100% chance that they'll hang yeah. us. If we get caught. There's got to be another option. Yeah, there's a, there's another option. I'm sure Mary will welcome you back at the farmstead. <laughs> well, I don't want to take the risk unless everybody's on board. Figuratively speaking. Okay, I have an idea. So Steed changed the ship's name to the Royal James and adopted the name Captain Thomas. Brilliant. No one will figure it out. And they set sail again as pirates. In late June 1718, Bonnet learned that Blackbeard was moored at Okra Coke Inlet. On his way there, he engaged ships under the false pretense of trade and then plundered them for their valuables. This time, he was much more ruthless. Your money or your oh. life. Bonnet was starting to Damn. become a true pirate. On his journey north to Delaware Bay, Bonnet pillaged 13 vessels, taking the last two sloops as part of his own fleet, the Francis and Fortune. He was starting to become more violent, now attacking and killing those in his way. Arr, good riddance. Listen up, guys, on this ship, no more diddle- That man on a mission- this Isn't some diddling, is it? No. Recite the ABCs backwards. I can't read. Bond would even <laughs> <threaten> sink <laughs> his own ships for lagging behind. Hurry up, ye scallywags, or I'll burn ye alive. Are you Bonnet losing your shit? Up the loot like a regular pirate. He is no longer offering wages. He was truly a changed man. Around yeah, 12 I mean, days later, that can do it to, you. to rest and repair the Royal James in the estuary of Cape Fear River. It's here that Bonnet decides to wait out the rest of the hurricane season. As Steed continued to pirate, he was becoming a more wanted man. The disguise as Captain Thomas did nothing for him at all. Oh my god, Bonnet is so hot right now. Local governments had had enough. By late August, authorities knew that Steed was moored at Cape Fear, and they were going to meet him head on. Ah, Bonnet, I will have you. Uh, you're the bane of my existence, Bonnet. You lack respect for the law. You have a lack of dignity, honor. Okay, yeah, I agree. Uh, Governor? Mm -hmm. ah, oh, yes, men, come in. I was just wiping my face. I want this disgusting pirate Bonnet hunted down and dealt with immediately. Any questions? No, no Governor. governor. Good luck, men. The naval expedition was led by Colonel William Rett. Two of his ships sailed for Cape Fear. The flagship, Henry, and a sloop, the Sea Nymph. The British fleet reached the mouth of Cape Fear. However, they weren't ready to fight yet. The Henry accidentally ran itself aground, and the Sea Nymph had to wait around until it could get free with the rising tide. Uh, Captain? There's a ship approaching from a distance. Ah, merchant ships, most definitely. Ready for the plundering. Send three canoes out and capture them. Aye, aye, Captain. Three canoes left the ship to scout out the two vessels. But as the canoes got close, it became apparent that these were not merchant ships, but in fact, heavily armed military vessels. The men quickly turned their canoes around and returned to the Royal James. Captain, Captain, Captain. Aye, lads. Those are not merchant ships. They are military vessels. Uh oh. Bonnet was faced with a choice. Either flee up the river, navigating the narrow channels in the dark, or turn and fight their way out of the river's mouth. Hop aboard, mateys. We have preparations to make. Uh, prepare the rigging and fall back, sir. No, quartermaster. We fight. Oh. Quartermaster? Captain, 
Look, I don't want to break this moment, but I'm going to need you to trust me. I've had your back since day one, and we've been on a lot of adventures together now, and I know you don't listen to my advice too often. But to be fair, Steed, oh my god, you get everything wrong. How, did you, how can you do this so how, every time? You just, <laughs> shut up. You're dumb. You're dumb, boy. <laughs> Let's retreat, Mr. Bonnet. We still have Blackbeard's fleet to chase down. We can all climb aboard our smallest ship and navigate our way through the winding river. Let the battle begin. As the sun began to set and the tide began to rise, the marooned ship, the Henry, was lifted off the river bottom and could join the sea nymph once more. Slightly up the stream, in the dark of night, Bonnet abandoned two of his vessels and brought all 46 of his men aboard the Royal James. There would be a fight, come daybreak. He's gonna fight the military? There's no turning back now! Henry and the Royal James drift closer to one another, the air still in tensions rising. Do we have a little bit? Oh. Fire! Fire! Both ships loose a volley of cannon fire, tearing each other apart. Rhett tries to bracket the Royal James between his two ships. Bonnet would have to act fast to avoid being torn apart by cannons from both sides. In an evasive maneuver, he pulls hard towards the west bank. However, this was a big mistake. The Royal James ran aground, and so did the Henry and the Seaman. From up on the shore, both sides would continue to fire upon each other. Oh my god! <laughs> Bonnet jumped on deck and threatened any of his crew that showed cowardice. If you don't kill them, it's another paddling for the lot of you! Uh, oh no! Oh my god, no! Medic! Captain, listened, I fear man. that I am gravely Should've listened. Oh, I'm going to give you any. Yeah, a little no, bit. No, 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 you're going to be all right. Medic! Medic! Just just hold on. I'll I'll, I'll push it all back in. Hold still. Oh, oh God, it keeps falling out again. It, ooh, it's so slippery. Oh. I think this goes here. Oh, oh, well, oh you don't even need this. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm not a doctor, but I think you'll live. Hold on, maybe if I tip you upside down, it won't all slide out. What in the hell? It has been a pleasure serving you, Mr. Bonnet. No! Now you should have listened. Captain. Oh, nice shot. Thanks. Been practicing all. <laughs> no hostages, no survivors. Amazingly, Bonnet's crew was dominating the English fleet. The Henry's cannons were angled away from Steve's ship, with shots whizzing past, while Bonnet's ship was the perfect incline to reach the Henry. Ooh. Only 12 of Steed's 46 men had been killed or injured, and the Henry looked far worse for wear. Bonnet stood on deck, ready to fight to the bitter end. And after this battle, Bonnet could continue pursuing Blackbeard and have his revenge. Or at least that was the plan. Except the battle continued for the next five to six hours. And as time was passing, their luck was quickly running out. So, the military vessels are downstream, and that means that as the tide rises, they're the first to get free. Mm. They repair their rigging and start heading towards Steed's ship. Uh -oh. All Bonnet and his crew can do is wait and hope that the tide is rising enough for them to get free as well. But it doesn't. Henry was soon in the position to fire its port guns upon the deck. Yeah, surrender. Engines. Bonnet's crew surrender? outnumbered three to one and had little hope of surviving a boarding. No! Uh, what do we do? Surrender? Arr. Light the powder keg! Scuttle the ship! But Captain, you'll do as all. That's an order! The crew starts preparing the ship to be scuttled. Get a move on, men! 
Captain, are you sure about this? Of course, pal. And if the quartermaster was here, I'm sure he'd agree. I don't know about that, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> we won't die a coward, pal, and my men will die with dignity. A mission to surrender, Captain. Pretty please. <laughs> See? Don't make us do it, Captain. Give it here. That's a paddling <laughs> for you later. Don't. Well, it's been an adventure. I finally lived the life of a great pirate. And this is how it all ends. They will tell tales of my courage. <laughs> No. <laughs> Look away, men. <laughs> shush, shush, shush. It's okay. It's okay. Bonnet's crew had reached their limit. They surrendered. After a few more moments of conflict, the Royal James was boarded by Colonel Rett and his men, and Steed and all of his crew were arrested. Bonnet and all of his men were taken to Charleston. Steed, Pell, and Harriet were separated from the crew and kept locked up in the house of the town marshal, Nathaniel Partridge. The three sat forlorn and hopeless in their cell. They would surely be found guilty and sentenced to hang. Time passed and anxiety about the gallows began to grow. Oi, just so you scum know, first to rat gets a plea deal. You think too little of my crew, oh. good sir. Oh. Back up, prisoner. Actually, you know what? Wow, my stomach hurts. Uh, guard, can I use the bathroom? What's wrong with that one? <laughs> no, no, no. He has I need to go to tell you something. The toilet. Oh, oh, right. Of course. No, come on then. No, no, I've got that for you, sir. I hope Pell's tummy's okay. So what do you want to tell us? <clears throat> okay, okay, so it was all Steed. He's like super evil, man. He made us kill people after the plunderings. The paddlings, oh sweet Jesus, the paddlings. He, he kicked a seagull in the face. My God, he's a monster. Ah, excellent. Thank and that's you. not all. He regularly just <laughs> throws his trash in the ocean. Wow, a four hour shit. That's impressive. The four hour shit. <laughs> hey, wait. Kid, give us a hand, would you? We're in a spot of trouble. No thanks, Bonnet. I'm hoping they give you the gallows. Excuse me? You don't know me, but I know you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Can you help us out? Cool. You let that pirate rob my dad's bank. And then the bank went out of business, and then he lost his job, and now he spends all day drinking angry juice. So I can't wait to see the life sap out of your wait, eyes. Wasn't that on Barbados? How did you get here? Whatever, Bonnet. It's a mostly true story. A mostly you true story. Played a few of the details to keep the audience engaged. You would have done the same. Shut up. Huh. I'm usually great with kids. Oh, it's real sad, isn't it? <laughs> Enough of this. I don't want to die. We've got one option. We're breaking out. The guards are stationed here, here, and here. We've got bed sheets, and we've got a. Baba. All right. So the details here are a bit sketchy, but it appears that they escaped on the 24th of October, 1718, with the help of a local merchant, Richard Tuckerman. We're out. Wow, really felt like the story should have wrapped up here. Pell, you're not coming? Sorry, Steed. I'm out. Well then, I guess you're my new right-hand man now, Harriet. I'm a lefty, sir, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Enough chit-chat. Let's blow this popsicle stand. In the dead of night, they ran through the tall grass and bush of the Charleston docks, where they would meet with a former slave and a Native American. They grabbed a small boat and set sail out of the harbour. 
your boy Steed was off again to adventure. His story would be full of many more riveting... Uh-oh. The wind, it's changing direction. It's pushing you back. The gods were not on Steed's side that oh. evening. Oh. It's blowing us in the direction of Sullivan's Island. The gods will be swarming everywhere. They crashed into the shoreline. scrambled into the bushes and hunkered down for the evening, hoping to evade the law. By this point, Governor Johnson had heard about Bonnet's disappearance and was absolutely fed up. Uh, this dude is absolutely cancelled. But sir, <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to hear it. I'm putting a bounty on this fucking guy. 700 pounds to whoever can tell me where he is. Yoink! We found him, sir. There's a road boat docked on Sullivan's Island with the name The Revenge 2 painted on it. That might be a clue. Bring me, Colonel Rett. We're catching this handsome bastard once and for all. You're out there somewhere, Bonnet. And I will find you. If it's the last thing I do. The officers scramble out to Sullivan's Island. They seize the boat. And with men stationed all across the shoreline, Steed and his crew were effectively trapped on the island. Colonel Rett was leading the search as they closed in. For days they scoured the area with a hunting party, finding tracks and signs of their movement all along the way. And, just two weeks after they had escaped, on the 6th of November 1718, the hunting party stumbled upon the four men. No, you're under arrest! Oh shit, run! How did they eat? How did they survive? The hunting party opened fire. No! Harriet, run! Hey. No! Nobody said it was the best life. I've been shot in it. Killing Harriet immediately and wounding the slave and the Native American. Dang. The only man yeah, unharmed no. was Bonnet. Jesus, that's some thick plot armor. There's no escape, Steed. Come with us now or be fired upon. Steed? Who is this Steed? My name is, uh, Steve. You know, like the regular name. With the V? Colonel Red shoved Steve down and tied his hands behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> no wait, you, you've got the wrong guy. You didn't you didn't even read me my rights. I want your badge number. Hey, hey, he's not giving me his badge number. You all saw. So Colonel Rett had captured Bonnet. Again. And they threw Bonnet in a more secure cell to await his judgment. What On November 10th, 1718, Bonnet was brought forward to the court. Unfortunately, the judge presiding over the case was Sir Nicholas Trott who, just two days prior, had sentenced Arch, 29 Arch, Arch, of Steed's Arch, men to death. Arch. Mr. Bonnet, who will be representing you in court today? I will be representing myself, your liege. Your honor is fine. Mr. Bonnet, you stand accused of acts of piracy against the British Empire. They made me do it. I don't even like pirates. I was tricked. They told me I was going on a luxury cruise. <laughs> Enough. Bring in... The rat. There he is. Gasp. But when did he have the time? Mr. Pell, you're here to testify against Steed Bonnet, or as you used to call him, Captain. Well, um... Pell, how could you? Well, I... Remember the ship scuttle scene from about ten minutes ago? Yeah, and how him. you held me yeah. in your arms. But, yeah, but... Uh... You remember? You can't? You can't talk about it? Actually, Your Honor, Mr. Bonnet was never much of a captain. There you if go. anything, the quartermaster had no power. I really did attempt to save the life of the captain by claiming the quarter was a patrol not seen, but the judge wasn't having it. Well, you already gave us your statement mm. in writing, so that doesn't mean yeah. anything. Bonnet, I sentence you to death. Pell, you're free to go. Oh no. What have I done? Judge Trott charged Bonnet with two counts of piracy 
as well as attacking and commandeering the ships Francis and Fortune. Trot also chastised Bonnet on his privileged upbringing and the stupidity at throwing it all away. Bonnet's fate was sealed. He would never be able to have <laughs> the Blackbeard. However, some justice was served, as Blackbeard would die while Bonnet was awaiting the gallows. Oh, okay. On the 22nd of November 1718, Blackbeard would be killed in battle in North Carolina at the hands of British sailors. He was beaten and shot five times and slashed with a sword another 20 times. His head was cut off and attached to the front of a British ship, and his headless body tossed into the Pamelico Sound. Rip. Rip! Wait! Oh, wow. Blackbeard himself was ruthless, so he got the ruthless treatment, but god damn! Make an example out of someone, I guess. Rip. There's still one option left. Steed had one advantage that no other pirate did. He was a man of culture. He was the gentleman pirate. Most importantly, he was literate. He would put quill to parchment and begin writing one of the most beautiful, persuasive pleas for mercy that any man had ever made. Yours sincerely, Steed. Hey kid, send this to the governor, please. Wow, the coward wrote a letter. Why don't you take your sentence like a man? Oh, go on, deliver it. I will, because it's my job, not because you told me to. Right, thanks. See you at the gallows. And then, Steed got down on his knees and prayed for the first time in a long time. Steed? His wife? Mary? Yes. You've come to rescue me. Oh, praise the heavens. I'm so great. Actually, I've just come to gloat and deliver. I will live to the ripe old age of something between 55 and 65. Eh, the records aren't really clear. Anyway, he has a stable job, and your children hate you. Goodbye, and I hope you're dead soon. Goodbye. Uh, it was nice to meet you, though. David! I'm oh, sorry. Oh, you didn't have to deal with her. You could have just dealt with your kids, man. But different times, I guess. I've got a letter for you, Mr. Governor, sir. He was seen as a bit of a rebel, and people wanted to see him go free, or maybe just punished a little bit, you know, but mostly let off, you know, he's a good boy. A lot of idiots out there. Hmm, that's Steed. Thorn in my side. Lovable rascal he is. That's his problem. Actually, that's who this letter is from. I wouldn't read it, though. Why bother? Oh, really? Well, the people love him. And this certainly was a moving letter. What else can I do? I guess I have no choice. Fetch me some parchment. I have a letter to write. December 10th, 1718. The day of Bonnet's So he's getting away with all this? It's been quite the run, but I guess it's all over now. I gotta know how this ends. The authorities Did it make it in time? Bonnet through the town and to the public square, where he would meet his fate. Oh no! Steve! Why are they taking Mr. Bonnet? Oh my god! What are they doing with Mr. Bonnet? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look, it's Ignatius Smell. I see life's treating you well now. It's a little something called karma. Now is not the time, kid. Wow, you're a bigger disappointment than Bonnet, but I have to give you some praise for dobbing him in. That's enough. You think they're gonna be happy? I'm glad Steed's getting what he deserves. doesn't seem too happy. You don't know anything, kid. Oh, really? Steed is a great man. The, the stories I could tell you, they, they blow your socks off. Wow. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah, you were. And I let him down. I let myself down. I let everyone down. Everyone! Steed's an idiot. And guess what? I've got his pardon from the governor. What? And guess who's not delivering it? Give that here. Buy uh, me. Uh, no, give it. Oh, give stop me. it. Uh, oh. oh. I don't have time for this. Ow! Come on, let him go! Kid. I'm not letting go! Stop! That's it, you're coming with me! Put me down! Hold still! Put me Stop down! Moving. Stay! Put me down! Stay still! Stop moving! So that's why he was running with the them? Prisoner. 
I think Where it's this way. Get back. No Wrong way. <laughs> Put me down. <laughs> Goodbye, pirate. Don't. No. Don't uh. do it. <laughs> May God have mercy on your soul. I'm gonna launch you, kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> It's it from the governor. All right, give it here. From the office of the governor, for the territory of Barbados, acting as servant for the crown of King George the First, dear Steed Bonnet, it is with the mercy of the crown and the power entrusted to me that I wish you good luck on your execution today. Love the governor. Uh, thanks. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Oh. A fascinating story and with Steve. That's just that's what it. happened to him. Unfortunately, nonfiction doesn't always have a satisfying ending. Yeah, that's but true. Steve leaves behind a legacy more impressive than most. And there's a reason that he's remembered over many other nameless pirates. Uh, and he got to be a character in Assassin's Creed. Steed, Steed Bonnet. Mm -hmm. This is pretty good. And he's highly Googleable. And. Oh, all right, we'll do the happy ending. Aha! I took some anti rope neck cream before you hung me, and I have the greatest booty of them all from my time as a pirate. An AR 15. Steve Bonnet. Yeah, I don't know what that's it. Had ever done him wrong. Eat lead, bitches. Oh, that was close. <laughs> especially the governor. Ouch. Oh. And especially Mary. Consider yourself divorced. He swept up his three remaining children, who forgave him immediately, and he jumped on a sexy speedboat and filled with gold, and the quartermaster was there, and they oh, sailed over back. the horizon together. Oh, and his other his son came back. Happily ever after. The end. Now what a goddamn story. I don't think people like being poor. And some people get desperate, so they don't have to be poor anymore. We're on YouTube. Y'all see some things that people do. It's very questionable. But if it gives them a little corn in their pocket and they don't have to go and sleep on a hardwood floor, people don't surprise me no more. But there we go, Blade Squad. Did y'all make it? Are you still here with me? Let me know if y'all want to see the architects, though. But other than that, Blade Squad, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you place up the like button. And if you feel like it, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video.